come. What other one? This is Mabel, come. And this is Mabel's roadmap to success. Now she's fearful of uh, and insecure around new people, so she's not gonna be in the shop too much unless she does this and I'm gonna reward her, come. Um, now the video above really will help with guests. Uh, so I would suggest if you're gonna have a guest come over and uh, have them help you out with Mabel, have them watch that video so they can actually emulate those things there. And I'd like the family to practice having, uh, I'd like to see uh, one a day would be ideal, but try to have at least three or four people come a week and just a short visit and have them just kind of follow the instructions I talked about there. Um, and ask your neighbors, because neighbors can come by real quick and uh, it's not inconvenient for them. We just need her to rep a lot of meeting people and people come, treats fall from the sky like we talked about in the video, and we're giving her the chance to approach and then walk away, approach and walk away. And each time she does that, she'll get more and more confident about it. And eventually, well, I don't know why I was fearful of people in the first place. But she's stressed out, I can tell she's got cortisol in her blood, she's breathing heavy, she's stiff, she's really jittery and jumpy. And uh, so uh, basically it's just, it's, it's, it's not a pleasant ex experience for her when guests, comes over, guests come over. And the other thing that guardians have been doing, and we, nobody wants to have their dog bark at a guest. So a lot of times when a guest comes over, she's put away. And for dogs, that can be actually interpreted as a punishment. And the association is when guest comes over, I'm punished. So I don't like guests, I'm gonna bark at them until they leave. Um, so we wanna flip that script and help her practice new behavior of being around people. The reason for this is I think that she's confused about her position with the family. And so we start off by talking about exercise. Um, I remember uh, we talked about the laser. So get a laser uh, when she's not stressed out and see, and dad might actually have one with a tool or something attached, and just see if she'll chase it a little bit. If she does, that can be something you can get her running around the house chasing a laser when it's icy and cold outside. The other thing is to do the stairs, uh, tossing the treat up and down the stairs. Um, fetch is also a great way to burn energy. Walks are great, but don't, instead of going for an hour walk, try to have two or three shorter walks as opposed to one hour walk. Um, and then, uh, let me see, something else you can do is Google Scent Games, S-C-E-N-T. So if a dog is using its nose, it's actually physically draining for them because they're activating their brain. So that, so what I do is I have the dog in the other room and I hide some treats around the room and then she's gotta come in to find them and it becomes a game and it's fun for her and she's, it's physically draining. So uh, for the exercise, you really wanna try to shoot for getting her uh, little 10, five to 15 minute exercise segments multiple times a day, usually every two to four hours, somewhere in that range. And so after you do that enough, you should start seeing, uh, and, and again, setting her up for success before I have a guest come over, make sure we exercise her before, but make sure she has at least 20 minutes before, between the time the exercise ends and when the guest arrives, so she can kind of catch her breath. Uh, but we can put her in position to succeed by taking off that top level of energy. If you have questions on the, uh, uh, these uh, alternative forms of exercise, message me, I have videos uh, where I can sh uh, share with you that go over all of them. We also went over the importance of rules and structure. The guardians really didn't have any rules for her, so I think she thought that she was in charge of protecting the women of the house. Now, the male of the house is a big guy, and so and he doesn't walk around her. And I think is a little bit more commanding with his presence and with his approach at sometimes. And so the dog is, re uh, is recognizing him as an authority figure, but thinking the women need to be protected. And so the way that we flip the leader follower dynamic, or one of the ways I like to do that, is enforcing rules and boundaries. So we talked about several rules that we can incorporate Remember, breaking a rule is not a reward for the dog. It's confusing for the dog. So uh, some of the rules we talked about uh, would be not being on the furniture for 30 days or as long as the problem is still going on. If you want to make the sleeping with us independent of that, that should be fine. That's fine, but it should be with an invitation only per every incident, and that's for good behavior only. So if she's up here and she starts barking, she has to get down. Um, another, uh, uh, oh, and the stairs is another, I think I mentioned that for the exercise. Uh, another rule would be not being allowed to be um, within seven feet of anybody's eating. So kind of like there's a barrier, and maybe there's a line from this leg of the couch, that leg of the couch, the dog bed would be independent of it, and the dog's not allowed to go in this area when we're eating a snack here. And we should practice eating snacks here so we can help her practice that behavior. Also remember to teach her to leave the area. So when there's no snacks here, touch her nose with the treat and throw it outside the room. When she goes out and gets it, say, out, let her come back and do it again. So we want to try to do that. Try to do that with every portal in your house for uh, maybe each person does that once with all the, all the portals in the house Eat every day for, uh, not every day per person, but maybe the guard, uh, guardian who's filming it now, today she goes and does all the rooms. And then with two treats each, then the next person the next day does the same thing. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the week, we, uh, at four or five days, we practice having her leave every room and put it in context. 
whenever we take away the dog bed, uh, dog, uh, the furniture, I always mention uh, the dog bed and how to make a dog bed as a command. If you forgot how to do that, message me and let me know. But she was already picking up on ocean, which is the command where we came up with for that. Um, also, she shouldn't be allowed uh, on the carpet around the dining room table when anybody's eating food. Shouldn't be allowed in the kitchen when food is being prepared. Remember to do the practice of the warm up. Microwave a piece of roast beef or something like that and uh, leave it out. And that way you can, it smells like you're, you're cooking, but she'll try to come and go and you can help establish and practice that. Um, let me see what else. Um, we went over, a, uh, well, let me see other rules. Um, have to sit at the door. I go to the door, I say sit once. If she doesn't sit, I walk away, sit down, and ask for a timer for your watch or whatever for 60 seconds. Go back and tell her again. If she doesn't sit this time, I walk away for two minutes, then for four minutes, then for eight minutes. Um, keep on double the length of time until she sits on her own. I have videos on this as well. Um, fetch is another great way to burn energy, which I didn't talk about in the earlier segment, but when you're playing fetch, make her come and sit and drop the ball before you pick it up and throw it. Um, another rule would be that she has to eat her food when give her permission to eat her food and not being a free feeding dog anymore. So basically we put food in her bowl, don't let her come within seven feet. Then whoever's feeding her, which should be one of the girls, I'd like to see the females in the house doing this for the next month or two, and whatever, unless it's unnecessary, uh, or necessary for him to, uh, but that'll help her uh, see and respect you guys a little bit more as authority figures. So we don't, we put food in her bowl, don't let her have it, and then I eat some, something, a uh, chip or cracker in five bites, and then give her permission to eat. Use passive training to come up with a command word for her to eat, like the favorite food that you guys have, or name a favorite restaurant, a lot of people like to do, something funny like that. Um, okay, I'd also like the guardians to come up with a list of the official command words. Put, paste it on the refrigerator or wherever it is. And if somebody's saying, come here, and the word is come, you say vocabulary, the person goes, come. Um, and so just try to use one version of the word, not come, come here, over here, just one version. Um, we also went over passive training and petting with a purpose. Now, remember, petting with a purpose, if the dog is initiating contact with you, or you want to pet the dog, you tell the dog to do something first, unless it prepays for it. And prepaying for it is kind of closer to passive training. Uh, now, when you pet it, make sure you pet it under the chin. Um, one person in the house really likes to reach over the dog's head, and she doesn't like that. So uh, we want to just uh, pay attention to what she wants. Now, to help her practice that, what we could do is take one of these tr tricky chain or treats that I have, smash it so it's like a flat like a pancake, let her start nibbling on it. And while she's nibbling on it, very slowly move your hand towards her head in that same motion. And if she stops nibbling and moves away, move it even slower. And eventually you can go faster and faster. Eventually you can go like this and she's just, whatever, she has trust. And we help her get over that. Um, I think a lot of that is due to the cortisol in her blood from being stressed out. I think she's in charge of her humans. Uh, let me see, what else? Um, I went over the target exercise. Remember you do it the target? Flash your hand, keep it within four inches of the dog's nose and keep it at a diagonal. And once you flash it, don't move it back here to get the treat. Flash it, when the dog touches with the nose, immediately put that treat there. And when she licks it up, say the word target. Once she's doing it pretty consistently, then move it about six inches away, eight inches away, 12 inches. Eventually you can go like from here, she's in the kitchen now and have her run all the way over here and touch her with the nose. It's an alternative way of calling your dog to come to you, but it's also really good if you wanna reposition the dogs in your way. Speaking of in your way, I'd like the humans in the house to no longer walk around the dog. If she's standing, I want them to walk through her as if she's invisible. Now if she's sitting or lying down, you can walk around and step over her, but if she's standing, she needs to learn my job is to get out of the human's way, not the other way around. Getting back to petting with a purpose. Um, I use the word toward paycheck if somebody's petting without a purpose. And that person has to stop petting, tell the dog to sit, and then tell the, explain to the other person, no, I did it right, you just missed it. Um, now, uh, the other, uh, that's a nice relaxed dog right over there, she's finally laid down. Um, the other uh, one is passive training. Passive training is waiting for the dog to organically offer you behavior on her own. If she were to come over to me on her own and I petted her and say, come, that's an example of passive training. So every time she brings you a toy, name each one of your toys. And every time she brings you the zebra, say zebra. Um, every time she lays down, pet her and say crash. Every time she sits down, pet her and say sit or whatever it is. If she does unusual things, you know, like grumble, like I talked to you guys about, mark that as well. Uh, but the more that we pet her for desired actions and behaviors, the more she's gonna do those things as opposed to mouthing and nipping. Uh, now, one of the things that I do uh, in our puppy class is if anytime the dog's teeth touch me, even if it's accidental and it doesn't hurt, is I yelp like a little girl. And I had to do it earlier because I didn't want to spook her, but I'll kind of, ah! and she just stood up. That's how puppies interact with each other and tell each other that was too hard. And we want her to know if I just touch a human with my tooth, they cry like a little baby. So she learns that I have to have good bite inhibition. I'm, under no circumstances should you put your mouth on a, on a human because they cry, or if she does it a second time, leave the room. 
immediately get up and leave the room and close the door behind you. That's the fourth quadrant of operant conditioning. That's called a negative punishment. You're deducting something in the equation, you. What she's doing is, I want your attention. Pay with, play with me. Oh man, it made her leave. That's the opposite of what I'm trying to accomplish. Now it has to be repeated over and over. Remember dogs, so the repetition, consistency, and good timing. You have three seconds to correct a reward. So if she does this, you're like, no, I got The dog guy said, I got to get up and leave. No, I'll call you back. Like, no, oh, I'll tell you remember. I'll call you back. You missed your three second window. So if you're on your phone, just get up and walk away. But that way the dog learns that that does the exact opposite of what my intention is. Petting with a purpose and passive training. If you get in a habit of doing these two things, more than anything else, every time you pet your dog, it becomes a micro training session. It'll have the biggest return on investment for you. Like I said, the dog's gonna come and start sitting in front of you to prepay for the attention. I like to use the, the escalating consequences to disagree. Remember the first one is a hiss, one time per instant. Second one is a stand up and turn to face the dog. Keep the dog in front of you till it stops moving, then take two steps backwards, pause for one second, then sit down. The third consequence is to march deliberately at the dog until the dog turns sideways or greater from you. At that point, you freeze, and then you pivot go to the second consequence. You're pivoting as the dog's moving around. When it stops moving, take those two steps backwards and only those two steps backwards. Um, and the only time that doesn't apply is if the dog's breaking a boundary. I forgot to mention this. Let's say that I'm, not, I'm the dog and I cross, the boundary's here. I cross the threshold. Somebody marches at me. I turn sideways here. Well, I'm still not supposed to be on this side of the boundary. So I would bump into the dog until the dog crossed the boundary and I would stop enforcing at the point of contact. And then the dog's gonna try to go around, I would step to the side this way or step to the side that way and block the dog. Now when you're doing this, and make sure you take a step backwards and pause. Like if you're enforcing the boundary to the kitchen, take a step backwards and pause. The dog's probably gonna come forward. So you would rush towards the dog. As soon as it crossed the line, you rush at it like it stole something. And as soon as it crosses the line, you stop. After a while, that's how the dog figures out where the invisible boundary is. If you need help on enforcing visible boundaries, strangely enough, I have videos for that as well, so please let me know. Um, let me see, anything else? Uh, so the mouthing and nipping. So uh, I'd like you guys to try yelping. If that doesn't work, then turn to face the dog and march deliberately at the dog, or you can leave the room completely. Remember not to pet her when she's scared or fearful or excited or jumping or any of those things, because that's training her to do those things as well. Um, is there anything I'm leaving out? All right. Well, um, uh, Mabel, let's see if we can get one more treat. We get more. Mabel, puppy, puppy, puppy. If you have a good breeder and you say that, breeders will usually say puppy, puppy, puppy when they feed their dog. And that usually causes the dog to come and run. All right. So uh, this is Mabel about to come into the camera. And this is Mabel's roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog. Only sometimes you need it.